This is our documentary that we made over a course of one week with the help of Kale Elementary and the Extreme Journey Through Hallowed Ground. They helped us with the equipment that we need and not only that, they've helped us have a great week in summer and I think that everyone will enjoy it. Yeah, hope you enjoy it. On October 16th, 1859, John Brown and his 21 supporters attacked Harper's Ferry. Brown had despised the institution of slavery since he was a child and was trying to start a slave uprising. They took over Harper's Ferry to get weapons and establish a headquarters. Soon after they had taken over, soldiers from Virginia arrived and surrounded them. After a while, the soldiers had killed 10 of his men and he was cornered in the firehouse with some of his men a few hostages. Robert E. Lee and 90 Marines arrived by train. Lee said John Brown could surrender and not be harmed while awaiting the president's orders. John Brown refused. Then the Marines busted into the firehouse and captured Brown. Brown was taken to South Carolina and then hanged on December 2, 1859. I think John Brown was a leader because he was determined to change the world by ending slavery when the odds were majorly stacked against him even if it cost him his life. In 1810, George Gilmore was born into slavery. In 1850, he married Polly, who he met while working at Montpelier. He and Polly had eight children, five of which reached adulthood. After the Civil War, they were free and moved into an abandoned officer's cabin. Using money earned from farming, he built a better cabin nearby to the original. He worked as a carpenter, saddle maker, and a farmer. Polly probably helped out around the farm and might have been a seamstress. And his older sons also had jobs and made money. The Gilmores had hogs, chickens, a horse, and a cow. In 1905, George Gilmore died and was buried on the farm. And Polly lived on the farm until she died in 1908 and was buried right beside George. George was 95 when he died and Polly was 90. He was a leader because he was very hardworking and he showed that because he had to work very hard on the farm to feed his family and he had multiple jobs at a time. In 1751, James Madison was born in Port Conway, Virginia. He and his 11 siblings were raised at Montpelier. At Montpelier, Madison's teacher lived with them for a few years and taught him a lot. He went to Princeton and graduated in two years and could read and write in seven languages. He was very smart. Jefferson was a good friend of Madison and had come to Montpelier a lot. James Madison represented Orange County at the 1776 Virginia Constitution Convention and later became a delegate for Virginia at the Continental Congress. Before the Constitution, when the states followed the Articles of Confederation, each state was sort of like its own little country, so they couldn't have a national army or manage that. Madison thought there should be a federal government with branches that are all equally powerful. In 1787, at the Constitutional Convention, he introduced his ideas in the Virginia Plan. The Virginia Plan was the framework for the Constitution. James Madison used his intellect to create the Virginia Plan, which was the framework for the Constitution, and the Constitution established our government. 